good morning children are you happy hope you are all very happy isn't it okay in the last class we have learned about the arrival of the portuguese in india about the arrival of portuguese in india bartolomeu dias then vasco da gama then pedro alvares are the three sailors came to found out the sea route to india isn't it then then three governors also upon by one appointed by the portuguese in india okay they captured some places and established they the trading centers in india also okay so that five countries came to india for trade okay that is first portugal second dutch third british fourth the danish fifth the french okay today we are going to learn about the arrival of the dutch british danish and the french okay so first the dutch okay the people of holland the people of holland are called as the dutch okay for the dutch followed by the portuguese they came to india in the year 1602 the year is very very important okay so the dutch the people of holland they followed the Por by the portuguese and they came to india the in 1602 okay the dutch okay the people of holland they found their first factory at masuli patanam they found or established their first factory at masuli patanam where is masuli patanam that is in andhra pradesh where is masuli patanam in andhra pradesh okay then after that the dutch established their settlement at pulikate where is pulikate near chennai okay they established their settlement near pulikate that is chennai near chennai diamond diamond was exported from pulikate to western countries okay that they used that pulikate this to export that diamond okay they exported diamond from that pulikate to western countries then they captured the dutch first they established their settlement at masuli patana second pulikate now the, they captured amboina and nagapattina from the portuguese first portuguese came to india and they captured some places isn't it now from the portuguese the dutch captured two places amboina and nagapattina okay from the portuguese here they established its supremacy in southern india who established its supremacy in southern india now the dutch okay so at first pulikate was the capital of the dutch now they shifted it to nagapattina first pulikate was the capital of the dutch now they shifted it to nagapattina okay the most important indian commodities commodities meaning things traded by the dutch were the silk cotton indigo opium rice what are the important commodities traded by the dutch in india silk cotton indigo opium do you know about that indigo what is indigo it is used in dyeing okay it is blue in color it is prepared from a plant that is indigo they used for dyeing purpose okay then here next rice opium opium means also it is prepared from a poppy plant okay so these are the important commodities traded from india by the dutch what are the commodities silk cotton indigo opium rice so diamond also they exported isn't it so the important factories in india were masuri patanam amboina nagapattinam pulikate surat sinsura kasimbasa patna and kochi these are the important factories established by the dutch in india well, this all the places they established their settlement and the factories what are the place masuli patanam amboina nagapattinam pulikate surat sinsura kasimbasa patna and kochi okay 
so now they after this much places they captured is in it to extend their settlement but now after the arrival of the british when british came to india what happened the dutch lost their settlement one by one to the british they lost their settlement one by one to the british okay this much only about the british the about the dutch okay so the dutch came to india in the year 1600 to then important their settlement okay establish their settlement a uh, fact is in this places then the important commodities are silk cotton rice indigo opium okay sent from the pulicate there they exported what diamond to the western countries okay, after the arrival of the british they lost their settlement one by one in the hand of the british okay now british that is on 31st december 1600 that she came to india 1600 to okay but uh, here that uh, british okay they came to india december 31st 1600 ad elizabeth who was elizabeth the queen of england elizabeth the queen of england gave permission to the company to the east india company to trade with india who gave the permission queen elizabeth the queen of england she gave permission to the east india company to trade with india in which year 1600 ad okay the company was headed by a governor and 24 the members of 24 directors one governor and 24 directors so totally 25 members are headed in the company okay so the company was headed by a governor and 24 directors okay here that is captain cockins cockins so when they reached to india captain cockin he visited jahangir who was jahangir are you remember the mughal emperor he who visited jahangir the mughal emperor cockins the captain the british captain cockins visited jahangir court to get the permission for the company to trade with india okay so the mughal emperor jahangir permitted the english to establish their factory at surat near gujarat okay so jahangir gave permission to the british to establish their factory at surat okay now the english merchant this is first jahangir and thomas ro also we see the cockins and the thomas ro visited jagangis court and they got permission to establish the factory at surat okay after that one english merchant that people came to india for trade from the trade one merchant his name was francis day one merchant his name was francis day what he obtained madras obtained meaning he get or caught he caught madras as a lease lease from the chennappa nayakkar the ruler of chandragiri that lease l e a s c what is the meaning of lease that lease means contract or that let out for rent for one year five year 10 days 3 years like that okay not monthly year wise that is they give for rent okay that is contract they contracted to cook at metras as a contract at francis day who was francis day he was a one merchant okay he got that metras from whom from the chinnappa nayak that nayak's rule is it that him chinnappa nayak he got that metras metras as a lease lease meaning contract okay that it is let to for rent okay so first they got the surat now that merchant francis day he got that which place metras okay as 
they establish a factory at Madras also. So then the East India Company, okay, they built their famous one factory that is known as Saint George Fort in Madras, which became their headquarters, Saint George Fort. Now also it is there, isn't it? Our Tamil Nadu government is using as a secretary, isn't it? So the East India Company established, okay, they only have constructed the famous fort, St. George Fort in Madras. Okay. Then, after that first they caught Surat, next that uh, Francis Day, he caught Madras. Okay. Then next King Charles II, King Charles II, okay. that uh, he was the King of England, okay, or Britain. Say King Charles II, he was the King of England, what he gave, he received as a dowry from the Portuguese, okay, which is Bombay. He received Bombay on his occasion of marriage with the Catherine. That means, you know, that Bombay was in that time under the control of the Portuguese, okay. So now that Portuguese king's daughter was married by Charles II, the king of England, okay. So the Portuguese king canned over this place as a dowry to whom? To Charles II. Okay. So now Charles II, what it means? The East India Company, he gave to the East India Company as an annual rent, rent of 10 pound. Okay. Annual rent of 10 pound. So now the East India Company got Bombay an annual rent of 10 pound from whom? From Charles II. Who was Charles II? He was the king or ruler of England. Okay. How he got Bombay as a dowry from the Portuguese. Okay. So now the British established their trading centers at Surat, Agra, Agamadnagar and Broch. Broch is near Surat. This place. Okay. Now the British established their trading centers at Surat, Agra, Agamat, Nara and Broch. These are the places under the control of the British. Okay. Next is Danish. Danish the people of Denmark. Danish means the people of Denmark. Okay. The Danish came to India in the year 1616. 1000 616 okay so here that uh, the king of Denmark who was a Christian four Christian fourth he was the king of Denmark okay Danish means the people of Denmark is called Danish so now that uh, the, the ruler of Danish or the ruler of Denmark who is Christian four Okay, that a Christian for what he did it means he established an Danish East India Company. Danish East India Company in the year 1616. 1616. 1616. Okay. So that time here he established an Danish East India Company. Who established Danish East India Company? Christian four. Who was Christian four? The king of Denmark. Okay. So they established their settlement at Trangubar. Where is the Trangubar? Trangubar is in Tamil Nadu near Chennai. Nowadays we are calling Tarangam Padi. Trangubar or Tarangam Padi. Okay. So now that Dan is called that Trangubar as a Danish burg. That Dan is called as the Trangbar as what? Danish Burg. But in nowadays we are calling Tarangam Party. Okay. That Trangbar that was a, a settlement of the Danish. Okay. Next Sirapur. The Sirapur is at Bengal. Sirapur are also occupied by the Danish in India. Only two places, Trangubar and Serapur. Okay. So the king of Denmark sent Siegenfall to India. The king of Denmark sent Siegenfall to India. All of you know about the Siegenfall. Most of the Christians know about the Siegenfall, isn't it? 
he was a missionary also. He sent to uh, make, uh, that uh, king sent Sigan Paul to India. He set up a printing press at Trangbar. Who set up a printing press at Trangbar? Sigan Paul. He Sigan Paul was sent by the uh, whom the king Denmark. Okay, so that they failed who the Danish failed to strengthen themselves in India. They failed. There were only two places only they established their factories. Okay, that is Trangbar and Sarapur. Okay, now they failed to strengthen their factories or themselves in India. So and they sold their settlement in India to the British. They sold their settlement to India, to the British. Okay. So what are the two places only? Isn't it Trangbar and Serapur? This place were sold by the Danish to the British. Okay. That means only about the Danish. Next, the French. Among these five European countries, the France was the last European country came to India. France was the last European country came to India. The French East India Company was established in 1664 AD by, by Colbert. The French East India Company was established in 1664 AD by Colbert. Who was Colbert? He was the minister of Louis XIV, the king. king Louis XIV's his minister was Colbert. He only established the French East India Company. They established their factories at Pondicherry, Maggie, Conical, Malasur, Kasim, Basar. So, what, say the name of the places where that the French established their company or factory that Pondicherry, Maggie, Karikal, Balasur, Kasimbasa. Okay. So here the Albert he was a minister of the Louis XIV. Louis XIV was the king okay, of the French. So now Pondicherry was the most important French settlement in India. Pondicherry was the most important settlement okay, in India. They built Fort St. Louis in Pondicherry. They built what? Fort St. Louis in Pondicherry. Okay, the British established Fort St. George in Madras. The British established Fort St. George in Madras. But here that French, they established that Fort Louis in Pondicherry. Okay, this is only about the Europeans came to India. So next lesson we can learn about how they established their settlement. What are the struggles they faced? What are the war they did? Everything we can learn in the next class. Okay. Thank you.